and welcome back to another car review. Today, I have with me the 2021 Range Rover HST Sport. So, Range Rover, I'll be completely honest, has not ever been my favorite vehicle on the road. However, they do look really, really nice, and I have quite a few people in my family that really do appreciate them. Plus, overall in culture, Range Rovers are just popular cars. They make very highly technical and very sophisticated automobiles that don't last too terribly long. This model here is actually equipped in black on black, uh, Santorini black on the outside with a ton of metallic flake in the paint. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, the uh, And then you've got these beautiful massive red brake calipers on the front and on the rear. It looks like you've got uh, six pistons in the front and then two piston or four pistons in the rear. Um, and then on the inside, you've got this awesome black leather interior with heated and ventilated seats being standard in this car. Uh, memory seat settings conveniently located on the door and a Meridian sound system that makes the sound sound pretty darn good inside of this thing. Inside of here, You've got a convenient uh, dual screen setup that you can actually pivot and adjust the uh, location of this screen so that you don't catch any uh, flare from the sun. And as I've been using it, kind of getting acclimated with the car, I have noticed that it's actually not too bad as far as um, like day-to-day -day use case. It's a little bit laggy whenever you're switching between different screens. So sometimes it's really quick and other times it takes a bit of time to respond, just depending on what you got going on. So we're gonna lower the screen angle down a little bit, which I think that is really, really cool. Um, and then we can select different display themes, change the brightness. Uh, I'm gonna increase the brightness so it's a little bit easier to view on video. And then we can just go back to home, change the different wallpapers. You can. Um, change this out to a variety of different choices and then um, the nice thing about Land Rover is you can actually access pretty much anything that you want to do just on the front here instead of having to go a couple menus deep like you do with BMW and some of the other options uh, here on the steering wheel they have a much nicer steering wheel that a lot of the other cars offer and a very very advanced looking uh, dashboard so very high resolution. You can see we've got 32,000 miles on this car and it's held up really well with the age. So even though we have a suede steering wheel, these typically wear out really quick. It still feels plush and soft. The thing that I hate the most about Range Rover actually is they have these little metal lines that run throughout the steering wheel. Who thought that was a good idea? Cause these get hotter than Satan's balls, man. They are so warm, but the uh, integration with the steering wheel and being able to change a couple of things, that's really nice cruise control with lane keep assist this is really nice to be able to activate that very quickly there on your steering wheel and uh over here you've got automatic automatic lights which you'd expect with this uh fog lights you can independently change which side you want to be activated which which is also really really cool um you know, it's just really good quality fit and finish. Uh, they have been running this body style from 2013 up until 2022. They just came out with the new version of 2023 uh, this year, actually. Uh, the These little uh, temperature dials down here, you can actually individually change for different, um, for what whatever you're going to be using, whatever's on the screen here. So if you go to your ventilated seat section, you can adjust the uh, temperature of the seats by doing that and then if you want to go to climate you can go back change that back to climate and then can turn the air up so it's not so loud in here so these have multiple functions and they continue to change depending on what you have going on i believe let's see if they stick depending on what the last thing you select is no they always default back to climate control which makes sense you've got your uh driving modes able to be selected here on the screen or you can adjust them by using this little scroller down here and then it's going to change on your uh on your front display you can go through here and adjust the settings just change the more display controls for this split split display down here swipe down from the top that pulls up your radio and other information through that screen so this works pretty well. It's actually not bad at all. I was expecting it to be way more laggy than it actually is. It, it functions very, very well for being a Range Rover product. Uh, let's see how that changes in 20,000 miles, but this thing has 30,000 miles and it still seems to be functioning pretty well. Um, so down here, you've got some a pretty big center console area. You can actually have a fridge that gets properly cold. I've had this car on for a little while and you can actually see the condensation 
uh, is forming there on the inside of the cabin. So if you had a couple of sodas in there, that would work really, really well. Uh, and you can turn it off. So if you don't want to keep anything too cold, you can put your phone or something like that in there. If you had this running on cold, because then it would, it would keep it cold and let, wouldn't let your devices or uh, valuables start to melt or get hot. It's road trip, you got up some chocolate or snacks. You can just keep those down there and take them out whenever you're ready. Uh, you've got more storage here underneath this really cool little hidden compartment. It goes all the way down. Um, that my arm is like almost all the way in there. So that's a deep storage compartment. You've got a bunch more uh, charger ports down there, a couple of charger ports, and you can just pull that back whenever you're ready to use it for drinks and stuff like that again. And then you can even hide that. I love having a simple interior and this car really does accomplish that. You've got your split uh, glove box. You've got your top glove box and then you have your bottom glove box. The top one's spring loaded. So whenever you pull that Thing back it actually it actually just springs right back into place you don't have to force it close again you can just close it back down and you're done this car has a ninety thousand dollar msrp whenever it was brand new it is uh currently being sold for eighty six thousand dollars there at bmw cincinnati north uh if you guys are interested in it just let me know um this uh steering wheel is very very high quality but so i think what we need to do now is we need to take it on a quick test drive and go see how it performs in the real world. The shifter down here is very high quality. You can just press that little front bit and pull it back into drive, push it over to the side, that puts it in sport, and that's gonna be our, our automatic transmission uh, sport setting. So this has 395 horsepower coming from an inline six, uh, turbocharged and all that kind of good stuff. Good exhaust note it's got plenty of power and then even the suspension uh with range rover they have their air ride suspension that's very very responsive very dynamic and is able to quickly adjust adjust and adapt for whatever use case you're going to be uh asking it to give uh you do have paddle shifters this is an suv so you aren't really anticipating having to use them but they do work very very well uh you're not going to be feeling like they're going to fall apart in your hand. They actually feel a lot better than what uh, what Mercedes offers and uh, not quite as good as uh, some of the others, but definitely, definitely in the uh, live up to the price price point that this vehicle is in. Get a little merge into traffic. They also do sell this with a lower horsepower engine. I believe it's about 340 horsepower. The 395 was much better reviewed by car and driver. I don't have the opportunity to drive the lower horsepower variant, but they said that they prefer the HST trim, which I'll take their word for it because it does seem like it's probably a pretty good idea. If you're already spending, you know, 80 grand plus, you might as well just go ahead and spend a little bit more and get the faster version of it. It's a Range Rover. It's, it's gonna be high quality. You're gonna enjoy how it rides. So why not just get the best of the best? Get a little wiggle side to side, see if you notice too much body roll. For being a big SUV, it does adjust very quickly and level back out. So you're not feeling the entire chassis just wiggle around and feel like it's about to you know, tip over just by doing a little wiggle of the steering wheel. And if you look down here, uh, as I'm kind of driving and adjusting how my speed's going. It's actually telling me how I'm, how efficiently I'm braking. Um, and just how I, how I monitor what the car has going on. So since we're at a dead standstill, everything's gray, start creeping forward and it's not changing yet. Let's, uh, wait till we start going. I'll, I'll show you guys what changes here. Managed to catch the worst traffic to try to do a car review in. So if I do a hard acceleration, you'll see that that center part there drops to a red to, indi <coughs> to indicate that I'm accelerating too aggressively <coughs> and that it's bad for fuel economy. If I brake, you're gonna see that, that that far one on the right is gonna drop down. So it's actually telling you how to be a better driver as you're driving the car. And I, I'm very impressed by that. Not a lot of other manufacturers have any kind of ability to do that. Riding around in the car, not a whole lot of outside background noise. Very, very supple, very soft. And uh, I'd have no problem daily driving this. To thing. again comment on the isolation of the car, you've got the double pane windows, which for me is a huge deal whenever you're dealing with a luxury car. The one thing 
one of the other complaints I do have to make about it, I hate how Range Rover puts the uh, door cards, not the door cards, the window controls over here on the top of the door card. Put them down here where we can easily access them. I don't need to have access to, um, I don't need to have access to change my windows up at the very top or change my seats, seat controls. Put them on the side of the door. Make them so they are a, a part of the car to be used rather than a part of the car that you, you're going to accidentally press trying to roll the window up or down. That's just That just seems silly to me. Uh, the location of the start-stop button, also kind of annoying, but a small complaint to be had um, whenever the rest of the vehicle is in, in pretty nice. All right, so one last thing that I wanted to mention before wrapping this whole video up for you guys is one of my favorite features, and also after driving this car, probably one of my least favorite features about this is the integrated defrost lines into the dash or not into the dash but into the windscreen so the problem with the integrated lines is they you don't really notice them whenever you're just sitting around but whenever you're actually trying to like focus on traffic it gives the whole windscreen this foggy effect yes it gets cleaned up a lot faster from ice and other debris but it's very foggy and I you can't avoid that because you're running filament through the glass so it's never going to be as clear as a straight piece of glass, but it is really nice. The car has great sound dampening. If you're going to be buying this thing and it's like, you know, anywhere from one to five years old, I would say it's a phenomenal car and go all for it. You don't want to own this thing after 80 to 100,000 miles because it's going to be a total basket case to take care of and to maintain and to continue to try to keep on the road. Um, Range Rover makes fantastic cars. The car automatically lowered because it knew I was home and it was going to lower down so I didn't have to jump out of the car in order to get it done. $87,000. This car's worth it. It feels, it looks, it does all those things. It sounds absolutely phenomenal, but you know, it's just not for me. Um, but it's not telling me, that's not me saying you shouldn't buy it. It's just not my personal preference, but thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, and you would like to learn more about the car, uh, feel free to comment down below and I will answer any questions you might have. Thanks. And I'll talk to you later. Also, I just noticed after reviewing all the footage and everything, I said that this thing was turbocharged. I meant that it was supercharged. It doesn't sound turbocharged. I don't know why I said that. I just did because I'm dumb, but it's supercharged and it sounds incredible.